would ask that the uh, quorum call be lifted. Without objection. And then, Mr. President, thank you. I would ask unanimous consent to address the Senate as of in morning business. Without objection. Mr. President, thank you. Uh, earlier today, uh, the Financial <coughs> Services and General Government Appropriations Subcommittee, of which I'm a member, uh, conducted a hearing on the data security breach at the Office of Personnel Management. Um, I am a member of that subcommittee, and uh, the, we had several witnesses, including the OPM Director Archuleta, and our goal was to learn about the latest data breach that was revealed earlier this month. Uh, I think in many ways the hearing was useful, and in other ways it was uh, inadequate. The hearing once again demonstrated much more needs to be done to address the ongoing IT management issues that plague so many agencies, but in particular OPM. As our witnesses testified, the recent breach, and really its breaches at OPM, were not a resource issue, but a management issue. Uh, too often, uh, and I certainly would understand that how we appropriate money is important, but too often the excuse is, we don't have enough resources. Today, it, uh, in my view, was made clear that this is much more a management issue than a resource issue. As Director Archuleta said in her confirmation hearing, as well as in today's hearing, IT security was her top priority when she entered the agency in November of 2013, but what's transpired since then has been troubling. So, in her confirmation hearing, she reminded me today that IT data security was her top priority as she arrived at the agency uh, in late 2013. Uh, Ms. Archuleta highlighted the fact that in March of 2014, OPM detected a sophisticated attack targeting sensitive information. While the hackers then didn't get information in that particular instance, this should have been the first alarm to go off that somebody was trying to get access to very sensitive documents. And let me reiterate what I'm talking about in this case. This is March 2014. We're talking about a hack attempt that occurred last year, not the ones that are making the news today. And unfortunately, then again, in June of 2014, again, a year ago, a company that was involved in background checks for the government, U.S. Investigation uh, Services, USIS, suffered a breach impacting as many as 26,000 federal employee records. And then again in August of 2014, a third time, so we have March, June, August 2014, another company involved in background checks, Keypoint, was breached, and this time over 48,000 records were stolen. Both of these contractors uh, both of these breaches, OPM was required to send out notification to federal employees affected. So clearly, OPM knew about these breaches. Now we've learned that the credentials stolen in those original breaches were used to enter the OPM system and this time steal highly sensitive information. Information stolen was social security numbers, military records, veteran status, addresses, birth dates, job and pay history, health insurance, life insurance, pension aid, gender, race, and union status. So three separate examples should have been the stark warning to secure this highly sensitive data. When I asked the director today about this topic, she merely pointed to an IT modernization plan that was drafted when she entered the agency about 20 months ago. So my question was, having seen these three attempts at information at OPM, these three breaches, what then occurred at OPM different following that to further protect, to better protect information at the Office of Personnel Management? And the answer was really pointing to a plan that was developed when the director uh, initially arrived some 20 months ago at OPM. In addition to those three breaches, if that's not warning enough, there were two other important reports that also could have, should have, <clears throat> suggested that better management was needed. In November 2014, the Inspector General for OPM released its annual report on federal information security. That report found that 11 of the 47 major information systems, 23% at OPM, lacked proper security authorization. 
In fact, five of the 11 systems were in the office of the chief information officer, the person responsible for agency's data security. Ms. Archuleta this morning was proud to claim that the agency had been upgraded to just significant deficiency with regard to its IT system up from material weakness. And the Inspector General testified this morning that they had offered 29 recommendations in their November report, and to date, only three of the 29 recommendations had been adopted. In addition to the Inspector General, the IG report in November of 14, in December the following month of 2014, the General Accounting Office, the GAO, issued a report highly critical of IT management at OPM. The report identified best practices that OPM should implement to improve IT management. The report found that, quote, OPM's efforts to modernize retirement processing have been plagued by IT management weaknesses, another indication that OPM desperately needed to address IT management, which our witnesses argue is critical to ensuring agency-wide security. So my takeaway from this morning's hearing is all the warning signs were there. OPM was aware of the persistent issues. They knew about breaches to their contractors. The agency knew they were a target, yet the only evidence that OPM did anything was a plan that was written in the first 100 days of the new director's tenure at OPM. Planning is important, but execution matters a lot more. We still need lots of answers as to what OPM did following those original breaches last year. What security plan did they put in place? Have they identified which information to secure? How did they secure these documents? Were they effective in preventing other attacks? How often did the OPM director and CIO, the, the uh, information officer, uh, meet? And what were their discussions? I'm encouraged to know that our financial services subcommittee Appropriations Subcommittee intends to have another hearing, this time uh, with the opportunity to present in a secured setting so that no one can indicate they're incapable of answering the question because of security issues. I look forward to that hearing. But I would tell you that it's discouraging to know what I now know, uh, and it's an, a discouraging time for IT security and the federal government. I hope that we can use this as a lesson to other agencies that they need to be vigilant. We face real and serious threats, and inaction by agencies put federal workers, the American people, and most importantly, our national security at risk. In my view, this is important. These hearings matter, and the information that we are garnering and attempting to garner is important for those who are employees of the federal government. They need to know what has transpired so they can better protect themselves. Where are they at risk because of these hacks? And secondly, and perhaps more importantly, we need to know what has transpired here, what uh, processes need to be in place to prevent additional challenges to our information technology because it's a matter of our national security. So, Mr. President, for the sake of our federal employees and their well-being, but also for the sake of American citizens and our national security, this is not an issue that we are, uh, have the opportunity to, to avoid. Answers need to be forthcoming and decisions need to be made system-wide, not just at OPM, uh, but throughout the entire federal government as we work to protect those who work for the federal government and as we work to protect the American citizens from a national security perspective. Uh, with that, Mr. President, I thank you for the opportunity to address the Senate. And uh, I yield the floor, but before I do so, I would note the absence of a quorum.